Based on this interesting discussion between David Gogstein and Mr. Whale, I decided to make a w video uh, quickly going over that and then also introducing the part about markets. So understanding a little bit more about, so as you know, you, all of you know, yeah, the, the Bitcoin price is that or that, uh, and who determines that is there, how does it work? Uh, how do these prices work? Yeah, and I will go with you a little bit into that and also try to chime in who in my opinion is more right because it's it's a difficult case here So also from a legal perspective, so from a legal perspective, it's also it's also quote-unquote debatable So even if you do offset officially because right now they are disagreeing on a certain part We can see here that uh, so right now, Mr. Well is claiming that how did I owe you money? Did we or did we not go below twenty thousand US dollars? So Mr. Whale and David Goxin made a bet, uh, and Mr. Well was saying, yeah, we'll definitely go below twenty thousand US dollars. I think in twenty twenty one. So I'm not quite sure, but I think that was the premise. And now Mr. Whale is saying that he's right. I literally get orders approved under this price, so uh, you got nothing approved. Go home, bro. I'm looking for beef, but clearly you don't want to pay, so leave it at that. Have a nice day. So as we can see here, as it as it is true that it's right now in Binance US, there was a wick down there. But what you now have to understand is the markets. And now they, since they were talking about the price of Bitcoin, will go below twenty thousand. Now it's difficult to say who is right because my, because technically both are right. Because on one hand, Mr. Well is right that if you're only looking at the market of the Binance US market, so it's an exchange with well lots of liquidity but still um uh then you could say argue yeah he was right because actually the price did go below twenty thousand US dollars for a brief moment on Binance US. And on the other hand you have David Goxstein who is also right because actually to be fair uh the Bitcoin price is a representation in my opinion of all the markets and not one market because for example otherwise I could also launch my own market I could create my own exchange with almost no liquidity there and if somebody buys the entire supply up then the price of Bitcoin will skyrocket on my exchange because these are you have to understand that these are all closed markets we've got the Binance US exchange We've got the normal, so the Binance VS liquidity and so on, they're, as far as I know, completely separate from normal Binance um, due to regulatory issues. But it's just my opinion because in the normal Binance, we go to Binance USDT, if we go to that trading pair, so if we're not in Binance VS, but if you go to Binance USDT here, we don't see that wick down there uh, on the daily chart. So we, we, we do see it here on when did this happen, apparently, on, so yesterday. So the 21st, and we don't see the wick down here, so up to the 8,000 or whatever. So we don't see it here. So people who were on buy, on Binance, on the normal Binance, they didn't get liquidated if they were future trading. People who were on Binance, yes, yeah, that sucks a lot, but yeah, they all got liquidated. All the, all the long positions, gone. Um, but right, let's go on. So like I said, we've got separate markets. We've got the Binance S markets. Uh, we've got the Binance market. We've got whatever. Let's use Poloniex and QCoin and BitTrue. I don't know, it's just some random exchanges. Or Bitstamp, Bitstamp, and so on. And they all got their own markets and their own liquidity in there. And as we know, Binance has the most liquidity. But for example, if you're a whale and selling a lot of, a lot of anything, so let's, for example, let's go to CoinMarketCap. So how do, how does coin market pack determine the price? Coin market cap just have di has different data feeds and it takes the average of all these data feeds. For example, if we go to Bitcoin and click on markets, we can see that currently coin market cap is taking all these data feeds and it goes on and on and on. So different data feeds and takes the average price of all of these. But if we sort now by liquidity as or by volume, so it's only obviously oh yeah we can sort by liquidity. And if we have here a low liquidity rating. If I go to that market, or while I'm looking for another trading pair, for example, ADA to Bitcoin, or I don't know, uh, or Solana Bitcoin, so obviously if you're uh, trading differently, uh, maybe you have also a trading pair to anything else here. Just a small exchange with US dollars, this would be cool. Oh, oh okay, PTC USD, yeah, great. So there's a low liquidity rating. So let's look at this exchange here. And if I would be on this exchange right now, if you look at, so it's obviously hard for me right now to check, track this, but this is right now the order book. And unfortunately it changed it to German, but I'm quickly gonna change the language also to English here. So you can also understand that. And if, if we look at, so right now we can see the order book. So there are people selling and there's the buying pressure. But if I would, 
if I would, so let's group that a little bit more, if I would try to group this as much, much as possible, you can see here, that's the entire liquidity of, uh, or the, the entire liquidity of this website, gates.io. So if I have more than, you can see here the amounts, so 0 0.63, whatever, if I have more than all of these uh, summed up together, so five Bitcoin and so on, if we would sum them all up, for example, sell, I don't know, whatever. Oh, I just have to check what's, oh, what's on the right side though. Uh, now I have to quickly check that I don't say something correct here. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, right. Okay, on the, on the, in the middle there's the accumulated um, Bitcoin amount on the right side is the US dollar amount. But you can see here that it's whatever. Let's just average it and let's say these are whatever, 50 Bitcoin volume, uh, uh, 50 Bitcoin in the order book. And if I would deposit 50 Bitcoin to Gate.io and sell everything off right now, and if we would sell everything off, then the price would collapse on this platform shortly and all the people with future trading on this website will be liquidated as well. Because like I said, these are closed markets and the only way uh, these prices then level out is for arbitrage. So when, when the, obviously when Bitcoin is much too cheap, then people buy it up quickly because also people from other platforms will send in any, anything, for example, send, send the XOP, trade for US dollars and then buy Bitcoin back again. Uh, so then it's, the, then it's the moment of arbitrage, which would be a, a high influx of liquidity from other exchanges who are trying to make a, make a bargain here. Because so mostly these things are automated. So they're automated arbitrage traders, uh, trading bots. Um, which obviously when there's an opportunity to make 50% in a few seconds about quickly whatever makes the trades and then places it and so it levels. That's why it's leveled out so quickly. So obviously also humans can trade that and set limit orders, but when it suddenly collapses, then it's unexpected when somebody sells off such a huge chunk. And yeah, and but still, uh, so, so we now talked about all these premises, we talked about different markets, so these markets are all separate and for arbitrage for people sending liquidity and money between those because they can use any cryptos on off ramp. So you can send XOP from Bitstamp to Poloniex, sell the XOP for US dollars and then use the US dollars to buy Bitcoin for example and so on. Uh, and that's how all of the works. Uh, that, so liquidity is being streamed, also not streamed but sent all the time between exchanges in order to make some shorter or even bigger gains. And it's just unfortunate, so I don't know what the binance to S liquidity is. Let's ch check the, well, let's go back here and check the liquidity there. We can have a look at that as well. So if we group it even more, okay, two decimals, three decimals. And can we see more on that? Probably not. So it depends on the website. Some websites don't show it much. Um, yeah, it's obviously, it must have been a lot. And also obviously this could be all, so we can see here right now and okay, it's just, it's just small por portions, but I would need, like I said, um, bigger groupings here. What do these settings do? Okay, so this is just for buy orders. That's great. Ah, cool. No, okay, well, it still doesn't go deep enough. So you can see here, there's, oh, oh great, it's the entire order book, awesome. So we can see here, we've got it at, the, at the lowest place here. At, uh, so after, if we have a look here, so right now it always goes up here, but if we look at 56,500, after that it just falls because we don't have any uh, big accumulated buy orders there. So, uh, right, and that's why it can wick down if, the, if there's somebody sells enough Bitcoin at once, and then it will wick down and all the future trading or relies on that. And it's also a problem. Like I said, I don't know how much liquid, how much volume does it have? Uh, okay. Well, it's quite a lot of volume though, but still probably not that much compared. Well, it's compared to the normal Binance. So how much volume do you have here? Yeah, we have here obviously a million. Okay. Yeah. We've got 3.4 trillion uh, US dollars on volume here. But on this one, it could only like, what is it? 106, 170 million US dollars volume. And that's why it was so easy to make this work down. Not because, it, so it could be also somebody, uh, you know, like uh, like planning this. So it's, it doesn't take that much uh, money to do that. But I'm just trying to tell you to make you understand how these markets even work. It's not because the exchange was so evil and said, yeah, it's going to go down there. No, it's just because somebody or maybe it was multiple people or it, whatever. So it, so you can, you can speculate on that, how it happened. Yeah, it's just the, 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 the main statement here is certain people or one person or, or many people who also worked independently from each other sold off a huge chunk of Bitcoin at this point in time, sold it off, sold it off, sold it off, then obviously all the long futures were liquidated and it goes some further and further and then obviously it's going to be bought up very 
quickly because obviously if you can buy Bitcoin for $8,200 and go up back to $60,000, uh, well, yeah, you can make your 7 8 to 8 X within seconds. So yeah, that's that's why it hap also happens so quickly. So many, some uh, or many hours of bots or traders are very happy right now. And yes, and in my opinion, let's go back to the premise here. In my opinion, Mr. Well is wrong here uh, because in, uh, because the market, one market of Binance US, which is very small, uh, doesn't count as calling it, it has gone down below 20K. Because like I said, the volume is very low, the liquidity is very low, and that's why David Goxstein is right here in this case. And uh, now claim like, uh, did we or did we not just go below twenty thousand dollars? And so either he doesn't understand markets or how these markets work, or he intentionally tries to misunderstand it and frame it uh, that he's like the victim and he was right all along. But in my opinion, David Cox, like I said, was right, and yeah, he well, Mr. Well should pay up, and yeah, is in the wrong here. But like I said, just from a legal perspective, so not that I try to legally evaluate that, um, we can definitely uh, argue regarding the contract, so if you make a bet, so regarding that one there, that uh, that they didn't really specify which market, but you would assume, so if it was just about the Binance US market or whatever, on which market, what would be the adequate answer here, but still would still more, ta it's more a common conception, more uh, um, broad understanding that the the price is the average price more or less. So what the market is actually giving there, just because there's a huge discre discrepancy shortly, doesn't mean that it's worth less. Because for example, like I said, if there's one place right now that sells something very, very for very much money, for example, you're strand somewhere, uh, or and you're in dire need of water and somebody sells you water for $100, does it mean that all the water around the world is gonna be worth $100 at this moment? No. Just just at that market, nobody else can give it to you cheaper. So if, if, if there were arbitrage traders which could deliver water instantly, then obviously the arbitrage traders would come here and would offer it for $50, $40, $30 and go down until it's a normal price again. And yeah, that's it. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.